Welcome to Global Risk Community Chat. Today, our guest is Sebastian Ptajnik. I am very happy to have you here today, Sebastian. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm uh, also excited to you know, have a chance to uh, speak a little bit about some uh, hopefully interesting topics. Yes, likewise. I'm looking forward to it too. So before we get into the topic, can you briefly mm -hmm. introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, yeah, sure. So yeah, my name is Sebastian and uh, I was working in the quantitative analytics area for the past 13 or 14 years, uh, predominantly in, 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 in banking, um, where I was doing model, model development validation, and then in advisory, when I was uh, leading various teams focused on uh, credit risk mostly, as well as having a short adventure in tech. So uh, just, to, just to name a few names, of, um, you know, a few companies I work for, it's uh, Palantir Technologies, uh, Barclays, RBS, uh, Close Brothers currently, uh, where I'm leading the validation team, so, and Accenture. So uh, that's just a selection of places, places I work, 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 uh, work in, so hopefully you can share some, some good insights. Yes. Yeah. Sounds quite good. Then let's hop into the topic. So what would you like to share with us today? Uh, yeah, so uh, today I would like to answer, I mean, at least try to answer the question that is um, kind of on my mind for a longer while, which is uh, why open banking initiative works, I mean, at least seems to work anywhere but banking. Yeah, sounds like a very interesting question. Let's get into it and see if we can find an yeah. answer then. So what are some things that uh, when it comes to this topic? Um, uh, so so uh, the, topic, the topic is relevant as uh, open banking is a universally um, European Union initiative that kind of uh, facilitates and enables uh, data, data sharing be between, uh, between banks, financial institutions, uh, payment providers, and so on, and so on. And we build kind of a regulatory framework and then follow following up, up, up technology, te te technology kind of requirements that allows banks to share information about, about their clients, their, 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 their transactions, which in a way, you know, the, the idea was to kind of uh, help, uh, help, help, help customers and, and, and businesses get financing uh, and kind of uh, op op open financial services to new, uh, new competition, mostly from the FinTech, FinTech side. So that was the initiative and, and um, I will be talking about the um, UK, UK experience here. Uh, so that, that would be my focus. So uh, Open Banking became a thing in the late 2018, 2019. Uh, and since, weirdly, it, it, it got very little traction in, in, in banking. Uh, it seems to work fantastically outside. When, I'm, when I meet outside of banking, uh, I'm talking about, let's say, various fintech companies that will uh, facilitate, let's say, peer-to-peer -peer lending and then their bank banking license. And those companies uh, actually, uh, uh, utilize open banking data quite a lot because they, they, they can see their customers, they can see the financial information, and it's easy for them to uh, ingest, uh, process, and, and analyze and produce uh, valuable insight or even hinge the whole business idea uh, around, around having this data. Um, however, when we move, move, move towards banking, banks are surprisingly uh, reluctant to use this data, even if in theory it allows you to see everything about your, 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 your uh, counterparties, your clients. So you can see their financials, transactions, uh, plenty of information that's, that's, that, 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 that's securely shared and, and it's, uh, it's, it's fully, fully sub supported by the regulator. And uh, I would like to dive in into the reasons why, why this doesn't work. Um, so first, I, the reasons are, I believe, on the uh, on, on kind of on the provider side rather than the, on the banking side. So uh, companies that, that, are, that, that, are, that are built, uh, you know, af, af, after open banking became a thing are mostly tech companies and they do sell either the, the, the integration or they sell APIs. So they offer basically uh, infinite possibilities uh, and access to very, very, very uh, wide, 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 wide data, uh, which is kind of aimed to uh, stimulate growth to have the, the 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 wider possible client base for this for these companies and uh, yeah to to promote scale, scale, scalability for example. Uh, however, banks are different to fintechs, and I, I believe that so far, banks uh, level of tech readiness, banks business model, uh, and even banks uh, 
regulatory framework was, was mostly ignored by, by companies working with the open banking data. Uh, and maybe that's, that, that, that's why uh, it was not very successful. So let's, let's maybe dig in into it a little bit more. So when we talk about, about technology, um, if, if we have a FinTech company that's basically based uh, on an integrated technology layer, it's very easy for them to uh, integrate new data, automate things, and, and basically move on. So it's a, it's a low cost, uh, it, the implementation deployment is very fast. And the level of, let's say, tech awareness and, and uh, tech uh, readiness in the organization is very, very high. So it's easy to utilize new technologies. And plus the companies are fairly unified in the way, in the, in the structure, structure, structure point of view. Uh, when, we, when we go, uh, we look at banks, banks are not usually technology driven. Banks are driven by expertise, by, by by uh, relationship with their customers, uh, banks are driven by new product offerings. So, he, and banks are operating for quite a few centuries and, and technology was never the fundamental driving force of, of bank success. And now, and now um, coming to, to a place like that, we, which uh, the level of complexity of, of, the, of the company itself is well above fintechs, there is a whole regulatory uh, environment that we have to take into account because it's a regulated industry. Uh, plus the fact that banks are usually grow through acquisitions, so it's, it's kind of like a, usually a loose, uh, um, let's say, a, a one a sack of loose business entities doing their own thing put together. So it's fairly difficult to introduce any kind of. Uh, you know, bank-wide uh, disruptive technologies. I, I believe that the word disruptive in a regulated industry is, is probably not the, the, the selling point. It's, it, it's, it's fairly difficult to, to just come to a bank and, and, and propose, uh, we have an API to sell, we have a data integration, integration to sell. Uh, so in a way, banks, and, okay, uh, that, that's the one thing. Second thing is, um, it's, it's kind of linked to, to, to both of those things, the, the, uh, tech readiness and the complexity of the organization is that any kind of IT development is, is painfully slow and very expensive. So even if banks would buy APIs for open banking, they would have to find resources to develop tools, uh, uh, plug them into their workflows, build, uh, build controls, governance around them, uh, which is extremely expensive. So uh, not to mention that the whole design phase where banks would effectively need to design the tools they want to use uh, build up um, open open banking data now we can probably summarize this as banks probably looking for a tool rather than a bag of components from which you can build any to wish and then how how can we how can we fix this so i i believe that uh, I, I would use example of, of airsleep where where um, i'm, I'm, I'm a non-executive director so we are we are a tech company basically doing that thing. However, we kind of go step forward and recognize the specificity of banks, which are different to any other institutions using this data, uh, which means that we do take into account uh, typical areas where this data can be used. Uh, we understand how typical workflows look like. And, and therefore, on, on this API data integration layer, there's also a, a layer of, let's say, uh, predefined tools that banks can use uh, for any, any kind of a predefined use case like underwriting, uh, portfolio, portfolio monitoring, collections, etc. And this, this in a way allows, allows banks to access this data in a way that's familiar to them, in a way that, that they, they can, they can uh, utilize it, uh, minimize the cost of implementation because there, there, there is some kind of tooling built on, on top of the API. And uh, it's, it's more of an enhancement of the current workflows rather than you know, uh, a new disruptive initiative that, we, that, that proposes to uh, basically automate all of the underwriting, completely ignoring the level of complexity of underwriting and the fact that it's not a simple if-then process. There might be a, a levels of, of different uh, things you have to look at and but everything can be automated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, which, mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds good. I was just going to add, but yeah. And uh, I wanted to actually say, yeah, I like it's very interesting what you have actually mentioned in the sense that it's a open bank is in the name of banking, right? But that it is not, it's kind of interesting how it is not being mentioned or like uh, applied very efficiently on that end. But I hope that the 
reasons you have mentioned or certain solutions you mentioned can help out with it, with, you know, implementation of it also more efficiently. I have one last question before we kind of come to the end, and that is, if you were to share one takeaway point with our viewers that, you know, maybe if they are from an old, if they are from a bank especially or something, what can they start implementing very shortly? Uh, when it comes to, uh, to open banking or? You know, in general, like in terms of like with this uh, speech, if you were to, um, you know, like give one takeaway point or like one pointer to our audience. So I think that the takeaway point is, 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 is pointed rather towards the, the, the integration providers and the companies using this data and providing this data as a service rather than banks. And is that uh, specificity is not, not a problem, it's opportunity. And as much as keeping your product absolutely high level and, and, and abstract, in theory, gives you high, highest reach, you will be unsuccessful in banking because it's a specific industry, highly regulated, complex structure and complex workflows and technology is not the driving force yet so without without understanding this uh, it will still probably be lagging and i'm i'm hoping it will change but yeah so far open banking has not much to do with actual banking yeah okay yeah that that actually is an interesting takeaway point too not only necessarily the banking's end of things but also the service providers or the, you know the technology end of things as well with that being said, unfortunately, we have run out of our time. So I want to thank you so much for sharing your insights. A lot of, I think, interesting ideas or, you know, like reasons. I think it helps me at least or hopefully also our audience to understand the whole concept and the issues or, you know, like things al al alone gets better. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You too.